All right. I have a confession to make. I was a science teacher who didn't understand how science works. I know. Uh, look, I didn't know it at the time. We, we don't know what we don't know. Then a few years ago, I was working on a project that took me on a science field trip to the hot red dusty desert of the Australian outback with a group of world leading scientists, geologists, biologists, chemists, the list goes on. We were there to explore one of the fundamental questions of humankind. How did life on Earth begin? And we were in the outback because that's where we can find some of the oldest fossils on planet Earth, fossils of tiny microbes that lived billions of years ago. Now, while I was out there, I started to notice some interesting behaviors from the scientists. One thing that struck me was that although we were all looking at the very same things, we all saw them with very different eyes. Some of the scientists were able to travel back in time billions of years by reading the landscape. They read different structures as past volcanic eruptions and lava flows, or geysers that would have spit out boiling water, creating shallow pools perfect for the very first spark of life. Others looked very closely at the tiniest details in the rocks to figure out what the microbes would have looked like. And then others, very weirdly, looked up at the sky because they questioned whether life on Earth was even created here at all or whether maybe it had come from outer space and landed on Earth after hitching a ride on a meteorite. Now, interesting to me was that no one knew the answer. And not everyone agreed on one explanation. There were a lot of conversations and some heated debates around the campfires at night. Kind of reminded me of a murder mystery. Different people presenting different lines of evidence to make their case. And like a murder mystery, no one knew exactly, for sure, what had happened and how. Theories were presented, some with more convincing evidence than others, and the favorite theory could quickly be replaced with another that made a better case. Now, there was general consensus, but no absolute certainty. In fact, the jury is still out on how exactly life started on Earth. Now, I found these interesting behaviors quite unsettling because it was the opposite of what I had always known science to be. I thought back at how I learned science in school and see if this sounds familiar. Science was about cold, hard facts. And scientists had discovered these cold, hard facts by flying kites or sitting under apple trees. And we learned these facts in lectures and textbooks. We wrote them down and we remembered them. And then we were tested on how well we could remember them. I'm seeing some nodding heads, yes. And then sometimes we got to recreate experiments in the lab. So we throw on oversized white lab coats and those scratchy, sweaty uh, goggles for safety and, well, legitimacy too, let's be honest. And then we'd follow these step-by-step recipe-like procedures, you know, the scientific method that led us to the result that we were supposed to get. And if we didn't get that result, then obviously we'd done something wrong. But most importantly, there was always an answer, a right answer. The teachers asked the questions, and our job was to know the right answer. Well, how I learned science, how it seems we learn science, was completely at odds with what I had just experienced in the outback. And that's when the penny dropped. That was the moment that I realized I was a science teacher who didn't understand how science is done. Even with a four-year university science degree under my belt and a decade working in education, I had wrong ideas or misconceptions about how science works. Why? I had never had a chance to do real science. 
the realization was a little confronting and humiliating. It was a little bit like that feeling you get when you find out you've been singing the wrong song lyrics. Uh, but worse, because I had been teaching the wrong lyrics to others for years. The trip made me realize that science isn't about facts and recipe-like methods. It made me realize that science isn't a subject. It's a way of thinking, a way of understanding the world around us. Now, I teach science with imagination, creativity, deliberation, debate, uncertainty, and no definitive answers. Doing real science transformed my misconceptions, so why don't we learn this way? And if we did, how would that change the way people think? Well, I was curious, and I wanted to find out, so I enrolled in a PhD to do some research, you know, as you do. Um, and through my research, I, I found that it seems most people, young and old, have the same misconceptions I had before the field trip. And people have these misconceptions because there's a disconnect between the way science is taught and the way science is actually done. But these misconceptions can be transformed when people get to be and think like a scientist. As an example, for my research, I interviewed some high school students who had run their very own science investigation over months and then defended their findings to a group of scientists from a local university. That's high stakes for grade nine students. Now, in the interview, they told me that they now understood that there's always a margin of error. They realized that science isn't perfect or exact. They realized that there isn't a recipe-like method and there's no answer that you can check off and tick. There's just evidence. But so what, right? Like, why is this even important? Well, understanding how science is done makes you a better critical thinker. Because if you understand the process, then you know that there's always a degree of uncertainty and a degree of truth. Imagine if we all, not just career scientists, but all understood the process of how we know what we know about the world around us. We would all be much better judges of good, bad, and outright misleading science information. Basically, we'd all be much better at spotting the bull, uh -huh. <laughs> and trusting the science that matters and affects us us all. So, how do we create a world of scientifically capable decision makers? Well, I have just two very simple things that you can do. And the first simple thing is encourage people to ask their own questions. At its very core, science is about curiosity. It's about wonder. We as humans are intrinsically curious. Kids are especially good at asking the hard questions, the ones we don't have an answer to yet. I remember my friend's son asking me once, Auntie Izzy, how did the very first tree grow? You know, like the very, very, very first tree. <laughs> Essentially, he was asking the same question that drove this, the field trip to the outback. How did life on Earth start? So I told him that was a very good question and that not even the very best scientists knew 100% yet. The second simple thing is explore what answers there could be to your own questions. Do real science. I love when someone asks me the, uh, a question I don't have the answer to. I love saying I don't know because then I can say, how can we find out? Look, I, I know that doing real science can seem hard and complicated. But if we bring it back to the basics of curiosity and wonder, then it's not. I would argue that it's actually easier. You don't need fancy equipment. There's no how-to guide to follow. There isn't even a book of right answers. 
doing real science is as simple as looking up at the sky or down at the earth and saying, I wonder. <laughs>